What is up everyone? It's Amber and welcome to my college application advice video. I just wanted to pop in and say that this video that you're about to watch was filmed in May and right now it's July. The reason why I waited to upload this is because this isn't really like a normal video for my channel. I'm not usually one to make like factual advice videos. I'm more so just making videos for the laughs. But then I've been thinking about it and a lot of my friends that are juniors are like freaking out about college applications starting soon. I figured a lot of you guys are in the same boat. So I did a little YouTube community poll and asked you guys if you wanted to see this video most of you guys said yes so here I am giving it to you so this is the video I wish I had when I was applying to college everything I wish I knew everything that's actually important versus what's really not the truth about costs the truth about all of it but if you are one of my normal subscribers and you are just looking for some funny content skip to this timestamp at the end I put in some bloopers of me and my brother fooling around so yeah that'll be at the very end before we jump in I just want to explain I'm going to be a freshman at Chapman University this fall in Orange County California because this video I'm posting is two months old many things have changed since about my college situation one of them being my major so as you're gonna hear I applied to all my schools with a major in nutrition or something related to that and I've since changed it to undeclared and that's because I plan on changing my major to television writing and production but Chapman wouldn't let me jump right into it because their film school is like so competitive so I have to just do my freshman year undeclared and then I'm gonna apply for that major for sophomore year but yeah so if you hear me talking about nutrition or like my major in this video just know that it's changed to hopefully TV writing and production in the future also so just up to you guys on my situation a little bit further. If you follow me or my sister, you'd know that there was some talk of us going to California together, going to Chapman together. My sister's going to her junior year of college and she goes to a school in New York where we live. But when it came down to it, she decided she wanted to stay here in New York at her school that she's been going to and I'm gonna go to Chapman by myself, just because I know some of you were confused about that. Now, for those of you that are here for the college information, let's get into it. All right, guys. Okay, so this video, I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm gonna go through my college application process, my college decision process. So I'm gonna tell you guys my stats, my extracurriculars, how I did on applications, and my advice. <laughs> I would say as an individual, I'm smart, but I don't apply myself as much as I could, and I do enough to manage an A- minus average. I live in upstate New York. I go to public high school. Every class that was offered as an honors class, I've taken, and I started taking APs my junior year. My junior year, I took AP Lang, and then my senior year, I've been taking AP Lit, AP Environmental Science, AP Calculus AB, and AP Macroeconomics. And also since eighth grade, I've been in my school's accelerated art program, so I have a portfolio from that. Not a lot of my school's asked for it because I didn't apply for any of their art programs so that did not really help me but now I'm kind of considering moving something towards art like maybe a minor or maybe completely switching my major if possible so my portfolio might come in handy later but we'll get to that let us begin with my stats so my school doesn't weight their GPA so my GPA is unweighted 91.1 or a 3.64. My SAT score is a 1410 and my ACT score is a 31. Now, how did I study for the SAT? I did not. Now that my stats are over, my extracurriculars. I made a resume for my college application. A lot of my friends didn't have to make resumes, but multiple schools said like, if you have a resume and you wanna put it, go ahead. So I was part of probably like three clubs. I was only really active in one. People have been asking me like, do I need to track my volunteer hours? I didn't have to track my hours. On my resume, I just wrote like grade nine to grade 12. Also, I've like listed the things I accomplished within the club. So that's really what matters more is like being able to have a variety of things that you've done within the club. Actually, there might've been a spot on the Common App where it says like estimate however many hours of volunteer work you've done. I'm just gonna be honest. You could write any number and they would never know. And I was completely honest with all of mine, but like I know plenty of people that just made stuff up. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest with you, I. My other extracurriculars besides clubs. I wrote on my resume YouTube. There was a lot of stuff I could write for that that would show like my time management and like things that I understand from a business perspective now. Oh, athletics. I did competitive cheer from seventh to 11th grade. I just wrote like times I went to nationals. It doesn't really matter for me because it wasn't like a school varsity sport. I don't think they really care that much about that. I also wrote my work experience, which is an internship I did. Yeah, so there's all my extracurriculars. I applied to my schools with a nutrition major or if they didn't have a nutrition major available, I did health sciences or kinesiology or something within that realm. So I wrote my essay about how I've been vegan since ninth grade. I wrote about like my struggles with my health or whatever, like my stability beforehand. And then like, oh, suddenly I was interested in something and like I got interested in like weightlifting and stuff too. I don't know. It showed how I like processed new information, how I like was open-minded, how I became passionate about certain things. So my essay helped a lot with like my major kind of. I think writing is 
one of my stronger points, so I think I did pretty well on that. Since I'm talking about essays, I'll give you my tips on essays right now. If you're a junior right now, start journaling now just to like get random thoughts down because when you're writing your essay later, you'll just draw a blank like for weeks on end and it'll be helpful to go back to the journals and get some inspiration. Take days off of school. If you're meeting a deadline that soon, don't try and stay in school for every day when you could easily just make your brain work so much better, write a better essay. I would also advise you to watch movies to get creative inspiration, listen to albums all the way through, go to a coffee shop to write your essay, don't sit at home in the same spot every day, get a new environment, a productive environment, get that shit done. So just try and show how you're open-minded, how you process a difficult situation, how you bounce back from it, the whole shebang, bada bing, bada boom. So now I'm gonna start with my college application process. I did early action for the schools that had it available, which means that I had to meet a November 1st deadline. I applied to 14 schools in total. Most people were around 10. Most of them were in the 30 to 50% acceptance range, I guess. And then the few hard ones I applied to were like 20%. And just some names that you might recognize I applied to like Syracuse, Fordham, LMU in California, NYU, Northeastern, UPIT, and then a bunch of smaller ones. So I guess now I'll just tell you how I did. Is this thing on? So out of the 14, I got accepted to 11, waitlisted to two, and then the last one I applied early action and they deferred me to their regular decision pool and then denied me from there. Um, That was Northeastern and I was not expecting to get in because that was probably the hardest school I was applying to. So I was just kind of seeing if I could get in and I didn't, so. The two schools I got waitlisted, one was NYU, and I'm kind of proud of myself for getting waitlisted rather than just flat out denied, like, you know how it is. And then my third school I got waitlisted, LMU in California. I applied three minutes late. I applied three minutes late. So the deadline was January 15th, 11.59 p.m. All the information went through at like 12.02 a.m. January 16th. I'm, I mean, I'm still mad about it. <laughs> Whatever. There's definitely no way they could have waitlisted me based on my actual application. I think it's mainly that there was an application error. Like, it just didn't go in on the right day. Yeah, but it's fine. I don't really care that much. <laughs> It wasn't one of my top schools anyways, but like, kind of hurt my feelings. Hey lads, so I'm just popping in because I was editing this video and I got to the section where I started talking about costs and I explained it very poorly. So I'm just gonna re-record it right now. So here's the cost of applying to college. So each school has a different price for their application. Most of them are in like the 60 to $70 range. Two of my schools were free. My like most expensive schools were like $85. So I added up the costs of my 14 schools and that totaled $775. Another thing that costs money in applications is SATs and ACTs and sending those scores. So I took the SAT with essay twice and that adds up to $129. It's cheaper to take it without the essay, and I would not recommend taking the essay unless you're like very, very good at writing. It just looks bad if you do poorly because you can't separate your essay from your SAT score. Safer options, just don't take it. <laughs> like, just don't take the essay. Then the ACT costs $46 without the essay, and I only took that once. Then sending your scores. So I only sent my test scores to 10 of my 14 schools because the four of them were so easy that it would just be a waste of my money to send test scores. The SAT costs $12 to send to each school. So sending it to 10 schools cost me $100. $120. Then the ACT costs $13 per school and sending it to 10 cost me $130. Everything I just said were all of my personal expenses. Some other people might have other costs they have to add in like SAT prep classes or like application mentors. I don't know what they're called. So those are other things to factor in if applicable. So all of my costs added up equals $1,200. So keep the cost in mind. Don't apply to just random schools because you think you should. Apply because you can imagine yourself going there. Don't waste money. This shit is expensive. So now getting on to how I made my choice. If you watch me or my sister's videos, you know, I was between University of Pittsburgh or Chapman. I ended up going with the latter because uh, when I just weighed the pros and cons, you know, I mean, we're getting to it, whatever. Alrighty, I'm back again because this part of the video was very poorly filmed as well. So there were a number of factors that came into play when I was making my decision. So I got my little list out. I'm just gonna compare the two right now just so you can like see what I went through. So one factor in my decision was the price. On my list of schools, University of Pittsburgh was towards like the cheaper end of my list and Chapman was towards the very top of the most expensive schools. But Chapman ended up giving me a lot of financial aid and scholarships that made the price equal to that of University of Pittsburgh. Then I had to consider the majors and 
and programs available. So during the time that I was applying, I was planning on going into nutrition or something in that realm of like dietetics. So University of Pittsburgh has a nutrition program. Chapman doesn't really. They offered health sciences and that's what I applied with. So in terms of the major and programs, University of Pittsburgh came out on top at the time, but now I'm changing my major. So that doesn't even matter anymore. So woohoo, good thing I didn't do that. Then I had to consider location slash weather. Pittsburgh, the location was good because I have family 30 minutes outside of Pittsburgh, but odds are that I wouldn't see them because they're very busy and I'd be very busy. UPIT's campus is like interwoven with the city and that has never been something that interests me. I'm very much so a fan of a small suburban campus and that's more so what Chapman has. Chapman is also in California, which is much nicer, much warmer, better for my health TBH, but I also had to consider that I have no family or friends in California, so I'm on my own out there. And that is kind of sad. That was my next bullet was loneliness, but I think I'm pretty good at being alone, so hopefully it won't be like too bad. Like I've experienced enough lonesomeness in my life that it should be fine, or at least I think it should be. I don't know, I'm a naive son of a bitch right now. My next bullet is potential growth. So I saw myself potentially growing the most at Chapman because you know, the way I looked at it was Chapman was the biggest risk, so it had the biggest potential payoff. Then I considered the size of the school and the quality of the school. So U Pitt is a much bigger school than Chapman and I've always been more so drawn to smaller schools. I like more of a like smaller classroom setting where you're like kind of forced to know everyone because when I'm in a group of many, I tend to dwindle out. In a smaller setting, I'm more of myself, I think. When I considered all those factors and what my mind, my gut was telling me, Chapman was what stuck out because, you know, taking a big risk, being in warm weather, just experiencing something completely different would just, I think, really help me in putting myself in a situation where I really have to push myself to live on my own. I think that'll be very useful for me. Oh, I wrote this in my notes of things to say. Um, you're gonna feel really bad when you're writing your essay and just when you're applying in general and be like, wow, this does not fully express the person that I am. I feel so little and stupid. So remember this. Remember that you won't be able to completely express your greatness slash individuality within your application. Try your best, but don't let it hurt you. You're a fantastic person working in a flawed application system. You are not your grades. You're a person. You will have several cries during your application process, but don't let it get to you because it happens to everyone. From like October to December, like I was basically just felt like garbage. I like <laughs> didn't really keep in touch with a lot of my friends because I was like so busy with it. I don't know why I took up so much of my time. It's such a stupid thing. When my other friends gave me some really solid advice, they said, um, pick this school you would feel best at if everything else went wrong. Now that it's over, it feels so dumb. Like you think it's this giant thing like, oh my god, every decision I make is so fine or like this chooses like where the rest of my life goes. And I guess to some extent it does, but like so does every decision you make. I don't know. Four years, four schmears, come on. You'll end up completely fine. You'll be within your body. You'll handle it as you handle everything else. Everyone that has ever gone to college has experienced this and you'll do just the same. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. Sorry this was really long and not funny at all, but y'all were asking for it. I figured I'd show you guys what this whole process was like for me. I know a lot of my audience is younger than me, so they're about to go through this. Most of my videos are not this serious. You know, if you want to go watch my other videos to have a laugh, go right ahead. Be my guest. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos. It's recording. What? 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 I just swim. You had to swim today in gym class? Yard. Yard. Does anyone Look know how sweaty to... I am. Ew, what did you just do? Go outside for like 15 minutes. Ooh. 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 Bro, I have so much hair. <laughs> These bitches don't know. Ew, ew, you're dripping. What the fuck? I got drip. What the no, no, no. Three monkeys. Three monkeys on bed. <laughs> One fell off. Motherfucker was dead. Oh. Oh. Ah. What? 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 You okay? Oh. Stop that. Ah. Peep the drip. I'm not. Ew, you're making Bobby sit on my pillow. No. Zoom in, dog. Zoom. Dog. Andrew, what do you think of my intro that I do in my videos? Shitty. You think it's bad? Yeah. Hey guys, 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 gals. Look at him, pimping it. He's pimping it. He's just chilling. He's just thinking about how much money he has. <laughs> Hello, ma'ams and madams. Bonjour, senors. Woo! <laughs> 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 Made a little bit of money. I pay my bills.
Now you're a bad boy. Bad. You. <laughs> bad. <laughs> this side, this side. Oh, my bad, my bad. You see how he's sitting? Beautiful Bubby loves to sit on my lap. But you gotta stop growling for the video. People are gonna think you're mean. Hi, Bubby! Ew. Bubby's really going for it today. Yeah, he a horny motherfucker. Please not say that. Sorry. Okay, let's do my intro together, Andrew. Hello, Hello. my girls and gays, gays and ladies and gays, gays and girls and gays, gays and ladies and gents. gents. That was awesome, Andrew. High five. Yerd. High five, yerd. High five, High five, five. awesome. Whoa, well, you can't include this though. Why? Public nudity. Andrew, you were naked for the whole video. Pussyfoot. I'm gonna go take a bath. 